the organization called Code Pink organized a tribunal to investigate the Iraq War. I was going to be part of this. My proposal to discuss the Israel connection was approved a month ago. However, days before the event, I learned that I was not to be included. I was greatly disappointed. I feel it is essential to understand the causation of this disastrous war, especially since the same parties who pushed us into Iraq are promoting similar attacks on other nations using similar misinformation. Here is what I was going to say. Israel and its American partisans played a major role, perhaps the decisive role, in pushing the U.S. to invade Iraq because they considered Iraq a potential threat to Israel. An invasion that has resulted in the deaths of half a million Iraqis, 7,000 Americans, will cost the U.S. trillions of dollars and led to the tragic regional chaos we see today. The rise of ISIS, the flood of desperate refugees fleeing that devastated region, to then overwhelm some European communities and begin to impact the U.S. as well. Numerous analysts have discussed the Israeli connection to the Iraq War in detail. There have been in-depth articles by Stephen Green, Kathleen Christensen, and many others, and essential books, The Israel Lobby by John Mearsheimer and Stephen Walt, and especially The Road to Iraq by Mohammed Idris Ahmad, and The Transparent Cabal by Dr. Stephen Snagoski. Mainstream Israeli media have not been shy in discussing the topic. A 2003 article in Haaretz, one of Israel's main newspapers, reported bluntly, the war in Iraq was conceived by 25 neoconservative intellectuals, most of them Jewish, who are pushing President Bush to change the course of history. The article gave what it termed a partial list. U.S. governmental officials Richard Pearl, Paul Wolfowitz, Douglas Fife, Elliot Abrams, journalists William Crystal and Charles Krauthammer, describing them as mutual friends who cultivate one another. The article included an interview with New York Times columnist Thomas Friedman, who was quoted as saying, it's the war the neoconservatives wanted. It's the war the neoconservatives marketed. Those people had an idea to sell when September 11th came and they sold it. Oh boy, did they sell it. So this is not a war that the masses demanded. This is a war of an elite. The article continued. Friedman laughs. I could give you the names of 25 people, all of whom are at this moment within a five mile block radius of this office, who, if you had exiled them to a desert island a year and a half ago, the Iraq war would not have happened. Another Israeli newspaper described how some of these individuals, high American officials, gave Israeli leaders tips on how to manage American actions and influence U.S. congressmen, concluding, Pearl, Fife, and their fellow strategists are walking a fine line between their loyalty to American governments and Israeli interests. American author, peace activist, and former CIA analyst Kathleen Christensen discussed the situation in a 2002 article, reporting, Although much has been written about the neocons who dot the Bush administration, their ties to Israel have generally been treated very gingerly. The Bush administration, she wrote, was peppered with people who have long records of activism on behalf of Israel in the United States, of policy advocacy in Israel, and of promoting an agenda for Israel often at odds with existing U.S. policy. These people, she wrote, who can fairly be called Israeli loyalists, are now at all levels of government, from desk officers at the Defense Department to the Deputy Secretary level at both State and Defense, as well as on the National Security Council staff and in the Vice President's office. Christensen described the network that Friedman mentioned. Richard Pearl, head of the Defense Policy Board, Paul Wolfowitz, Deputy Secretary of Defense, one of Pearl's many protégés, described by an associate as over-the-top crazy when it comes to Israel, named by Time magazine as the godfather of the Iraq War. Louis Scooter Libby, Vice Presidential Chief of Staff, mentored by Wolfowitz. Douglas Fife, Under Secretary of Defense, another Pearl protégé, 
given an award by the Zionist Organization of America, citing him as a pro-Israel activist. Peter Rodman and Dove Zakheim, Assistant Defense Secretaries. David Wormser, co-author with Pearl and Fife of strategy papers for Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu. His wife, co-founder of a website run by retired Israeli military and intelligence officers. Elliot Abrams, Director of Middle East Affairs. Thomas Dine, Head of Radio Liberty, formerly head of APAC, Israel's main lobbying organization. David Frum, Bush speechwriter who coined the term Axis of Evil for Bush's State of the Union address. Frank Gaffney of the Center for Security Policy, another Pearl protege. Imports from the Washington Institute for Near East Policy, a think tank spun off from APAC. The Jewish Institute for National Security Affairs, JINSA, whose high-powered board is often able to place members inside conservative U.S. administrations. The list goes on and on. William Pristel, the Kagans, Michael Ledeen, Stephen Bryan. Their neocon strategy papers were dotted with concepts like redefining Iraq and redrawing the map of the Middle East. Author Stephen Green wrote a meticulously researched expose, turned down by numerous media outlets before finally being published by Counterpunch, describing how some of these individuals, including Pearl and Wolfowitz, had been investigated through the years by U.S. intelligence agencies for security lapses benefiting Israel. Yet, despite a pattern of highly questionable actions, suggestive of treason, they continued to procure top security clearances for themselves and cronies. Israeli leaders worked to sell the war to Americans. Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon and former Prime Ministers Netanyahu, Perez, and Barak all told Americans that it was urgent that Iraq's alleged weapons of mass destruction program be stopped, and Israeli intelligence agencies fed the U.S. reports supposedly documenting these. The Israeli article I mentioned earlier reported that the goal was far more than just an invasion of Iraq. At a deeper level, the piece said, it is a greater war to consolidate a new world order, to create a new Middle East. The Iraq war, the article said, is really the beginning of a gigantic historical experiment. We're now seeing the outcome. I've only scratched the surface on uncomfortable facts about the Iraq War that some wish to remain hidden, but my time is up. It's time for everyone to learn this information, the larger history behind it, and for all of us to join together to end the continuing drive for Americans to make war on Israel's perceived enemies.